since we've been dealing with fractions this whole week, the last question to ask is how do we handle uh, operations with any kind of mixed numbers? So we've seen our traditional uh, complex fractions that involves improper fractions as well, but if we have a mix, how do we handle those? So we're going to look at all of the different operations, and the first two that we're going to examine is multiplication and division. So if we need to multiply or divide, what do we do? Our very first step in every single case is going to be to convert to improper fractions. So when we're dealing with mixed numbers, the very first thing to do is make it not a mixed number anymore. So in this first example, we want to multiply 3 and 1 third times 7 eighths. So we've already got a traditional fraction over here. So we want to take 3 and a third and write it as an improper. So how do we handle that? If we take 3 and 1 third, reviewing back from a while ago, how do we handle it? 3 times 3 produces 9. And then we add our numerator of the small fraction, and that's all over 3. So we multiply the bottom times the outside, add the top, all over the same denominator. So 3 times 3 is 9, plus another 1 gives us 10 thirds. So 3 and 1 third is equivalent to 10 thirds. So now we'll use that instead. 10 thirds times 7 eighths. How do we compute that? We want to reduce, and 10 and 8 both share what factors in common? 2. So let's break it up into those common factors. 10 can be split up into 2 times 5, and we're still being multiplied by 7 over there. And down below I've got 3 times 8, which we're going to break up into 2 and 4. So now we can see that common factor that will cancel out, and what do we get across the top? So 5 times 7 gives us 35, and down below, 3 times 4, we get 12. And we could also take and write 35 twelfths back into a mixed number. So this is the improper form, and how do we convert back to the mixed? So if we want to report it in a different way, how do we do that? So we're trying to divide up 35 by 12, and we want to talk about how many times it can fit in there without going over. So 12 times 1 is 12. Yeah, that's too small. 12 times 2, we get 24. That will still fit. 12 times 3 is 36, which is too large. So the largest number of times it can go in there is twice. And 2 times 12 is 24. And then we find the difference of 11. So another way that we could describe 35 twelfths is what? two full units, and how many left over? 11 out of a total of 12. So our very first step with those is to convert them into improper fractions, and then in the end, we can always convert back to the mixed. So let's do that again for this second problem. We want to multiply 1 and 2 thirds times 2 and 1 fourth. So I'm going to take them individually, convert them, and then we'll come back and multiply. So let's take 1 and 2 thirds and convert it into its improper form. And how do we get there? So we've got 3 times 1 plus 2. Bottom times the outside plus the top. All over that same fraction denominator. So as an improper fraction, 1 and 2 thirds looks like what? 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 gives us 5. So we've got 5 thirds times, we want to find this equivalence as well. So let's take 2 and 1 fourth, and how do we get there? 4 times 2 plus 1, all over 4. So the bottom times the outside plus the top. 4 times 2, we get 8, plus another one is 9 fourths. So we have our equivalencies now in terms of improper fractions, so let's take and multiply them. 1 and 2 thirds was equivalent to 5 thirds. And 2 and 1 fourth was equivalent to 9 fourths. And before we multiply everything together, let's reduce it. 3 goes into 3 once, and 3 goes into 9 three times. So across the top, what do we have? 5 times 3, 15. And 1 times 4, 
4. And again, this is the improper form. So to convert it back into our mixed, how do we do that? We take 15 and we're dividing it by 4. So 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12. We're getting there. 4 times 4 is 16, which is too big. So the greatest number of times it can go in is 3. And 3 times 4 gives us 12, which is a difference of 3. So 15 fourths is the same as 3 and 3 fourths when we multiply those guys together. It's a very similar story with division. Again, our first step is to always convert into uh, the improper fraction. So the first one, it already is a traditional fraction. And 2 and 5 6 is what we want to convert. So 2 and 5 6 as an improper fraction looks like what? So we take the bottom times the outside plus the top. And that's all over 6. So 6 times 2 we get 12. And 12 plus 5, what does that give us? 17, 6. So we can go ahead and rewrite this um, expression as 11 over 18 divided by equivalent in proper form, 17 over 6. And again, when I've got a fraction divided by a fraction, what do we do? Keep the first one as it is and multiply by the reciprocal of the second one, which is going to be 6 over 17. We just flip it upside down. So as we reduce, how is this going to simplify? So 6 and 18, they both share a 6 in common. 6 goes into 6 how many times? Once. And 6 goes into 18 three times. So as we multiply across the top, we've got 11. And across the bottom, we've got what? 17 times 3, which gives us how many? So 3 times 7 is 21. 3 times 1 is 3, plus another 2 gives us 5. So we've got 11 over 51. And can we convert that fraction to a mixed number? No, because this is already a traditional fraction. The part on top, the numerator, is smaller than the part down below. So we'll leave it like that. Same story for B, but in this case, we'll have to do it two times. So let's take 5 and 2 thirds and convert it into its improper form. And again, how do we get there? Bottom times the outside plus the top, all over the bottom. So 5 and 2 thirds is equivalent to what? 3 times 5 is 15, plus another 2 gives us 17 thirds. And then our second mixed number, 2 and 5 ninths, we want to do the same. So 9 times 2 plus 5, all over 9. 9 times 2 is 18. We want to add 5 to that and put it over 9. 18 and 5 together gives us what? 23. So we have our improper forms. So now, how can we rewrite this division? So 5 and 2 thirds was equivalent to what? Improper form, 17 thirds, divided by 2 and 5 ninths, and its improper form is 23 ninths. And when I have a fraction divided by a fraction, what can we do? Keep the first one the same and multiply by the reciprocal of the second, flipping it upside down. So as we reduce here, 3 and 9 both share 3's in common. So let's take that. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 9 three times. 17 and 23 are both prime. So what are we left with? 17 times 3, which we've already done that math, which is 51 all over 1 times 23, which is 23. But that's our improper form. So as a mixed number, how do we represent 51 23rds? So let's see, how many times can 23 go into 51 without going over? So 23 times 1 is 23. Obviously, that will fit. 23 times 2, what will that give us? 
46. If we add another 23 to that, we're way over 51. So the max number of times it can go in is twice. And let's find out how much we have left. So 6 is larger than 1. We'll have to borrow from next door. And 11 minus 6, we get 5. So another way to state our answer is 2 and 5 twenty-thirds. And it's mixed form. So we've handled multiplication and division. Now we're going to look at addition and subtraction. So when we add or subtract mixed numbers, first thing we want to do is add or subtract the part, so the small fractional piece that's tagging on the end, and then add or subtract the whole, so the whole unit on the front. So we hit the parts first, and then we deal with the whole. So let's work through a few examples. We've got 2 and 1 third, and we're trying to add 5 and 3 eighths to that. So let's look at adding the parts first. And I like to write it down and label them as such. Here's the part. So I'm taking 1 third, and I'm trying to add to it 3 eighths. Now in order to combine those together, we need what? Common denominators. And what is our least common denominator between 3 and 8. The LCD is 24. So let's make our common denominators and combine those parts together. To turn 3 into 24, we have to multiply by 8. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. And then over here, to turn 8 into 24, we have to multiply by 3. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So as we look at the parts, their equivalent fractions now become what? 8 times 1 is 8, all over 8 times 3, 24. And we're adding on to that 3 times 3, which is 9, over the common denominator, 24. So the sum of those two, just from the parts of those two numbers, what do we have? 8 and 9 together gives us 17 24. But that was just the combination of the parts. So we combined those two together. Now we want to look at combining the wholes. So the whole parts together, super straightforward. I've got 2 and another 5, which will give us 7. So when we combine these two together, what is the sum of these two mixed numbers? 7 whole parts and how many individual parts? 17 out of 24. And let's practice and do another one. Down below, if we want to add these three together, it's still the same story. Let's look at the parts, then the wholes, then we'll combine them together. So let's individually look at what are the different parts that we are adding together. So the fraction from our first value is four-fifths. This one doesn't have any part. It's just a whole value of five. So we'll skip him. And 4 fifteenths is what we're trying to combine on the end. In order to combine fractions together, we have to have common denominators. So what is our least common denominator between 5 and 15? 15. So we don't have to touch the second one. But the first one, we have to multiply by what? To turn 5 and 15, we multiply by 3. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So our equivalent fractions now become what? 3 times 4 gives us 12 over 15. And we're adding on to that 4 fifteenths, because that one already had that common denominator. So all together now, what do we have? 12 and 4 gives us 16 fifteenths. So that's an improper fraction. So as a mixed number, what do we have here? So 15 goes into 16 once, and then we have how many left over? 1 15th. So our part then, the sum of all of them, in terms of the part, is 1 15th, and we made one whole unit. So we can't forget to add in that one as we now calculate the sum of all the wholes together. So the whole part of my first number is 2. The whole part of the second one is 5. The whole part of the third is 1. But then from the sum of the parts, we have an additional 
one unit. So the sum of all the holes together, what do we get? 2 and 5, we get 7, 8, 9. So the sum of these three numbers, we get 9 and 1 15th. So we handle subtraction much in the same way. We deal with the parts and then with the whole. So as we look through this first example, as we try to subtract the parts, let's take those individually. And what has to come first? 3 sevenths minus 2 twenty-firsts. So in order to combine those together, we need common denominators. And what is the least common between 7 and 21? 21. So that first fraction, to turn 7 into 21, we have to multiply by 3. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So our equivalent part, what are we looking at now? 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times 7 is 21. We have our common denominator now. So we keep that common denominator, subtract across the top. 9 minus 2 gives us 7. 7 21st can reduce down to what? So they both share what in common? A 7. 7 goes into 7 once, and 7 goes into 21 three times. So the difference between those two parts reduces down to one-third. So again, that was just the part. Now let's look at the whole. So the difference between the whole parts. Our whole part of the first number is eight. The whole part of the second one is five, and that is a difference of three. So the difference between these mixed numbers is what? The whole part was three, and the individual part, we had one, third left over. And we're going to keep practicing with the subtraction. So let's take these two. We're trying to subtract, again, the parts first, and then we'll look at the whole. So as we look at the parts in this case, what needs to come first? 3 fourteenths, and we're trying to subtract off 6 sevenths. So what is our common denominator? What's the least common between 7 and 14? 14. So we don't have to touch the first one yet, but the second one we have to multiply by 2. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So right now I've got 3 fourteenths minus 6 times 2 gives us 12 fourteenths. So what's going to happen in this case that didn't happen in all the others. We've got a positive value, positive value, positive value with the parts. But in this case, when we find this difference, we're going to have a negative value. And that can't happen when we're just looking at the subtraction of the parts. So what can we do? 3 fourteenths was attached to which piece? The 7. So we can borrow from the whole, steal one of those units, so I could reduce 7 down to 6, and then I've introduced how many more parts into my fractional part of that number. So one entire unit in terms of 14ths is worth 14 fourteenths. So we can again borrow from our whole part of the number to create a larger part. So if we do 7 down to 6, now we've gained 14 fourths, that then we can remove the 12 fourteenths from. So 14 and 3 together gives us what? 17 fourteenths. So now that that first term is larger, we'll have a positive value. So we can always do that, borrow from next door. So our total, what are we going to have? Common denominator, 17 minus 12 gives us so we've got 5 fourteenths left over from subtracting the parts. So now as we consider the wholes, we're not dealing with 7 because we just borrowed to do this math. So now our whole part from the first number is 6, and the whole part from the second one, 3, and that's a difference of 3. So subtracting these two numbers produces what? The whole part was 3. 
And then the fractional part was 5 fourteenths. And one more, just for clarity's sake. Let's take and subtract these two. Now, on 14, I don't have any part. I have a whole unit. But I have to remove 3 sevenths from that number. So how can we rewrite 14 to include a fractional part? So 14, we can reduce it by 1 and take that one unit that we've broken off and rewrite it in terms of a fraction. So 1 with a denominator of 7 can be written as 7 sevenths. So in reality, is 14 the same as 13 and 7 sevenths? Yes, because 7 divided by 7 is 1, and 1 plus that 13 gets us to 14. So sometimes we have to borrow right off the start so that we can work with the parts. Because now, how we have it written, what is my first part? 7 sevenths, and I'm removing off 3 sevenths. And we have that common denominator, and the difference between those numerators is 4. So subtracting the parts, we've got 4 sevenths. And now for the wholes. What whole parts are we considering? 13 minus 8. And that gives us a total of 5. So as we subtract these two numbers, what are we going to get? Our whole part was 5. And the fractional part was 4 sevenths. We can also have application problems with mixed numbers. So we'll go through a few examples of those as well. So in the first case, we want to figure out how much of an increase it is to go from 3 and 13 30 seconds to 3 and 1 half. So to figure out how much we increase by, what do we have to do if we want to find the increase of something? So if I start with 20, for example, and I increase to 30, how do we find how much we've actually increased by? We take the new value, 30, and subtract off the old value, 20. It's the same in this case, even when we're dealing with mixed numbers. To find the increase, we take the new and we subtract off the old. So let's plug in and see what we have. We're dealing with a new value of what? 3 and 1 half. And we're removing off the old, which was 3 and 13, 30 seconds. And now that we have the correct order, it's like we were just working on. Let's take the parts and find the difference between the parts. And then we'll take the whole values and find the difference between the wholes. So of the parts, what are we taking from our first number? One half. And we're trying to remove off 13, 30 seconds. So the LCD between those two is going to be what? 32. So what do we have to multiply the first fraction by to turn 2 into 32? So 16 times 2 gets us to 32. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So our equivalent fraction's coming out. What do we got? 16 times 1 is 16, over 16 times 2, which is 32. And we're removing off 13 of those. So now that we have the common denominator, we're going to keep that. And the difference between the numerators is 3. So we found the difference between the parts. When we find the difference between the wholes, what can you tell me there? The whole part of the first number is 3, and the whole part of the second number is also 3. So we've increased by 0 whole units. We've only increased by a little bit, 3 30 seconds. That was our increase. So we had 3 30 seconds increase. Okay, second one, similar question, dealing with mixed numbers. We've got a metal cutting machine, and it can cut strips that are one and three-fifths of an inch long. So how many strips can be cut from a 48-inch piece of metal? 
So to kind of visualize what's going on here, we've got a 48 inch piece of metal to work with. So it's pretty large, it's pretty long. And we want to figure out how many different strips we can cut this into when the strips are how long? One and three fifths of an inch long. So obviously this isn't to scale, but we want to figure out how many of these we can fit inside of our 48 inch piece of metal. So how are we going to compute it? How do we calculate the number of strips? Well, we want to take our entire length of 48 and we want to divide it by what? The length of our strip, which is one inch and three-fifths of an inch. So in order to do that division, we have to convert our mixed number into improper. So 48 is fine, but we need to take that guy and rewrite him. So one and three-fifths as an improper fraction looks like what? Five times one plus three all over five. Five times one is just five, plus another three gives us eight over five. So in reality, we're taking 48 and we're dividing it by eight fifths. And whenever I have a fraction divided by a fraction, and we can write 48 over one, if we need to see it in that way. Instead of dividing by a fraction, we can flip and multiply. So let's see what we get when we've got 48 over one times what now? The reciprocal, which is going to be 5 eighths. Can we reduce before we multiply together? Yes. 48 and 8 share what factor in common? 8. So let's break up 48. 6 times 8 is 48, and we're still multiplying by 5 across the top. And 1 times 8 down below just gives us the 8. So that will reduce, and we're left with 6 times 5, which is 30. So that tells us what? Inside of our 48 inch long piece of metal, we can cut 30 strips, we'll put units on there, that are how long or how wide? 1 and 3 fifths of an inch. And the last thing that we want to do is to talk about how to convert a negative mixed number into an improper negative number. So it's the same process, but we just have to recognize what sign our number is going to have in the end. So for example, in part A and B, we have mixed numbers and we want to turn them into improper fractions. So part A, I've got negative 1 and 7 eighths. So that's almost negative 2. So if we want to convert this to an improper fraction, Right now, it's what kind of a number? A negative. So our answer is going to be negative. That's all that's going to change from the previous math that we've done before, converting. We just have to recognize it's going to be negative. So let's take 1 and 7 eighths and convert it. And we know in the end, again, our answer is going to be negative. So as an improper fraction, how do we compute? We've got 8 times 1 plus 7 all over 8. 8 times 1, we get 8, plus 7 gives us 15 eighths. So negative 1 and 7 eighths is the same as negative what? 15 eighths. So it's still the exact same process that we were dealing with before, but we have to recognize that we're dealing with a negative number. So the same story for B. I start with a negative number. So when I put it into its improper form, it should still be negative. And let's come off on the side and convert 23 and a half into improper. So how do we get there? 2 times 23 plus 1 all over 2. 2 times 23 gives us 46 plus 1 over 2. We're looking at 47 halves. But again, our answer, the number that we started with is negative, so our answer should be negative. And we could always convert back to double check and make sure we've actually computed those correctly. And let's work in that reverse direction. So let's take these two improper negative numbers and write them as a mixed number. 
So again, in part A, what kind of a number are we starting off with? A negative. So we'll just make note that our answer is going to be negative. And off on the side, let's take 22 and try to divide it by 5. So 5 will go into 22 how many times without going over? 4 of them. And 5 times 4 gives us 20, which is a difference of 2. So as a mixed number, we've got negative 4 and 2 fifths. And again, we could convert back to double check. Same story for part B. Let's take this negative number. So our answer should be negative. We'll make note of it now, and let's do the math off on the side. 4 goes into 9 how many times without going over? Twice. And 4 times 2 gives us 8, which is a difference of 1. So negative 9 fourths is the same as negative 2 and 1 fourth. So the last three examples to consider are just some operations with the negative numbers to review and make sure we have it all summed up. So let's work through this first one. What are we trying to do? Multiply mixed numbers. So the very first thing that we want to do is convert into the improper form. So my first number is negative, so we'll make note of that as we go along. It's negative, and let's convert 4 and 2 fifths into the improper fraction. So how do we get there? 5 times 4 is 20, plus another 2 is 22 all over 5. And we're multiplying by what kind of a number? A positive. So we just have to convert this one. So again, 11 times 1, 11, plus 3 gives us 14 elevenths. So I've got a negative times a positive, which will give us a negative value. And can we reduce this before we multiply everything together? We can. The top and the bottom, they both share what in common? 11. So 11 goes into 11 once, and 11 goes into 22 twice. So we've got negative 14 times 2, which is 28, all over 5 times 1, which is 5. And again, we know our answer is negative, since we had a negative times positive. This is one way to report it. That's an improper fraction. If we want to have it in a mixed form, how else could we report it? We know it's going to be negative, and we want to see how many times 5 can go into 28 without going over. So 5 times 5 gives us 25, and that is a difference of 3. So the product of these two is negative 28 fifths, or negative 5 and 3 fifths. We want to report both forms, especially if we started off with the mixed number. As we combine the next two together, what operation are we looking at? It's not multiplication anymore. Now I'm adding a negative value. So we're just combining these together with addition, and what do we have? I've got a positive and a negative. So when we combine together an example like this, if I've got 2 and negative 5, how do we handle it? We determine which one holds more weight, the positive or the negative, in this case, the negative, and then we do what? We find the difference between these two. So 5 minus 2 gives us 3, so our answer is going to be negative 3. It's the same story with the mixed number. We want to determine which one holds more weight and then find the difference between them. So as we look at this example, even though it's a mixed number, we can tell which one is larger. Which one holds more weight, the positive or the negative? The negative. So we know our answer is going to be negative. And we want to find the difference between what? 9 and 7 tenths and 6 and 3 fifths. Much like what we just did over here, we take the larger one minus the smaller one. Because we know our answer is going to be negative, we just want the difference. So as we look at the difference between these two, let's consider the part and the whole. So the difference between the parts, I've got 7 tenths, and we're trying to remove off 3 fifths. So to combine those together, we need common denominators. And the least common between these two is 
10. So we don't have to alter the first one, but the second one we need to multiply by 2. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So the difference between the parts is now equating to what? 7 tenths minus 3 times 2 gives us 6, and 5 times 2 is 10. So the difference between those, we've got our common denominator, and across the top, difference of 1. So we know the difference between the parts is 1 tenth, and let's go for the difference between the whole parts. So I've got 9 minus 6, which is 3. So we know the negative 1 held more weight, so our answer is negative. Negative what? 3 and 1 tenth. So it behaves much like what we were dealing with before. We're multiplying, adding, subtracting whole numbers. Okay, so we're going to use that same concept to combine these two together. So I've got negative 11 and 5 6 minus 20 and 4 ninths. I've got what kind of a number? A negative and a negative. So let's do just a basic numerical example. If I've got negative 5 and negative 6 together, that's going to give us what? Negative 11. So we decide what sign it's going to be, and then we do what with these values? Find the sum between them. Same story up here. I've got a negative and a negative together. is going to give us a larger negative, and then we do what with those values? We want to add together 11 and 5 6 and 20 and 4 ninths. So again, they behave just like our whole number examples with addition and subtraction. All right, so what do we do? Deal with the part, deal with the whole. We always start with the part first. So we're trying to combine together 5, 6, and 4 ninths. Now this LCD isn't as easy to see as the rest of them have been. So let's work off on the side and build our LCDs. So 6 can break up into 2 and 3, both of which are prime. And 9 can break up into 3 and 3, both of which are prime. So our LCD has to take all of one of them into account. I'm going to start with 6. And what is our LCD missing that 9 has? Another factor of 3. So our least common denominator between these two is 18. So let's turn them into our common denominator. To turn 6 into 18, we have to multiply by 3. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. And to turn 9 into 18, we have to multiply by 2, top and bottom. So we've got 3 times 5, which is 15 eighteenths. And 4 times 2, which is 8 eighteenths. And that will give us a total of how many eighteenths as we add across the top? 23. Now that's an improper fraction. So we want to convert that into a whole part that we'll add on down here and our leftovers. So 18 can go into 23 once, and we'll have how many left over? So we'll have to borrow from next door, and 13 minus 8 gives us 5. So we've got 1 and 5 eighteenths. So we've got our part, and we have an additional unit to add on to the whole. So what are the holes that we're considering? 11, 20, and that additional 1 that we produced from our computation with the part. So the whole part of this number is what? We've got 20, 11, and 1 all together. So we've got 2, we've got 32. All right, so we had a negative, and another negative is going to give us a larger negative. So we've got negative, our whole part, which was... 32, and the fractional part, which was 5 18 